cataractcoach.com. Pars plan injection of BSS during cataract surgery. And our guest surgeon is Dr. Mohammed Abu Samak from Jordan. So here's the patient who's monocular, highly myopic, making a good phaco incision there. That looks fine. And you can also see that there's a corneal scar or opacity that are just away from the visual axis. A little bit of tripan blue dye being used to stain the lens capsule. Also, the tripan blue dye gives a little bit less elasticity to the capsule. So viscolats can be put inside the eye. Let's fast forward a little bit here. The capsule axis goes beautifully. There it is. Now, here's the phaco probe in the eye. And the challenge that the surgeon has is a very, very deep anterior chamber. Now, we can see this frequently in patients like this who are very myopic. You can see it in patients who've had a prior pars plana vitrectomy. And there's a tendency for the whole lens iris diaphragm to be pulled posteriorly. So what the surgeon's doing here is there's no reverse pupillary block at this point. This is just deepening due to anatomic issues. So to further support that uh, lens, he's going to inject via the pars plana some balanced salt solution. Adding volume to the vitreous cavity, that's going to bring the lens more, more forward. So note the pupil snaps and it moves anterior. So now he's got a more reasonable anterior chamber depth. And Dr. Abu Samak is also uh, retina trained, and he trained here in the U.S. as well. So he has a lot of expertise in this area, and certainly doing a pars plane injection is not a significant challenge. So that looks pretty good. Now you can see the anterior chamber has been restored to a more normal anatomy. And now the rest of the surgery can proceed normally. So very important that we take as many precautions as needed in a patient like this, who is monocular, relatively young, etc. So the nucleus is chopped up into pieces. You can see the pupil has come down here at the end of the case. So certainly not an easy surgery. Now, what do we do about that opacity in the cornea? At this point, really nothing. Let's just do the cataract surgery alone, make sure the patient ends up uh, with a little bit of myopia. Remember, a patient like this, there could be a future ability to do a eczema laser ablation of the cornea, and it's more helpful if the patient ends up myopic. So when you do your lens calculations here, choose the lowest K value in the center of the cornea when you're doing your calculations. And that will give you a higher IOL power. And then certainly don't aim for plano, aim for at least a little bit of myopia. I'd say minus one or minus two would be a very reasonable goal here. So you can see here there's a tendency for the AC to collapse a little bit. So he's injecting viscoelastic with one hand as he pulls the probe out of the eye. And so let's watch the rest of the case here and, and see how things go. So time for bimanual irrigation aspiration to clean up that cortex. And this bimanual technique allows full 360 degree access to that capsule bag to really clean it up. For a monocular patient like this, would you do anything else differently? Well, I'd say do your usual excellent surgery. Now, with a patient who is monocular, if you have any leak in the incision, certainly for any eye, monocular or not, any patient, put a suture in. But you don't have to do anything differently because your normal technique for cataract surgery already accounts for everything. You're already keeping the eye absolutely watertight. You're already keeping very clean, sterile environments. And so there you go. Half the cortex removed. And now hands being switched. And the remaining half will be taken out as well. Here's the end of the case. Eye well going in the capsule bag. And everything looks great. Now, you should definitely examine the patient's posterior segment afterwards in the post-op period. Anytime you're going to place an instrument, whether it's a needle or something else, through the pars plana, let's make sure there are no entry site breaks. So even though this is a small needle, it's a very small gauge, probably a 30-gauge needle, it would behoove us to actually examine the patient's retina in the post-op period. Also because the patient is very myopic, long axial length, and when we do an IOL on these patients, there is a little bit of a risk that we need to um, mitigate. I want to encourage you to check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. You can submit your video too. If you've got a neat technique, hey, send it. Click on the link. I want to learn from you. 
Plus, we've got 800, 900 videos available on CataractCoach.com, soon to be more than 1,000.